Here's a little vanity I picked up at the flea market for only $10. My plan is to redo it for a challenge by the Flippin' Furniture Artist. And it's a blue challenge. And you get extra points if you make it rain. <laughs> so I'm removing the hardware, taking the mirror off, just so I can get everything clean and prepped. It's missing one bolt that attaches it, and that's a little weird connecting piece, a locking bolt or something that I'll need to pick up at the hardware store. I use my hammer to the claw part to gently remove the backing because the mirror isn't quite settled in there. Also, that way I won't need to worry about taping or scraping the mirror when I'm finished. I'm pulling out all of the little staples that remained in the the frame of the mirror. Next, I tighten up a couple wobbly legs and that's a real easy fix. I remove the seat cover with the padding from the top of the bench. Then I also remove the fabric and the padding. It takes a few minutes. I've sped this process up, but this is a little bit uh, more of a painstaking project using a flathead screwdriver and also little pliers to help remove the staples. This is my least favorite part of any job. And I've seen lots of people leave that upholstery, but I'm not allowed to sell unless I have it fumigated, anything that's upholstered. I can rent it, but I can't sell it. Weird. So now I'm cleaning the piece and I'm using Dixie Belle's White Lightning, which is a TSP cleaner. And I noticed there's a few little marks on top of the piece, but I'm gonna be painting. Um, some of this piece is wood and some of it is all MDF. So the top is wood. So I'm not concerned about uh, sanding it a little bit to get it ready for paint. Then I also rinse after I use the cleaner and we do that to make sure that there is no residue that remains that would uh, interfere with the adherence of your paint. So now I do a little scuff sand just using a 220 grit paper and just uh, go over everything a little bit, just roughen up the paint. So I'm in my workshop and just want to show you that I have everything rolling in on wheels. So I have a turntable here, I'm on wheels, and I have my cart here with all my paint and everything I need. So I have the piece upside down. I'm starting with the bench and I'm going to be doing a blend. I'm using a chocolate brown color and I know that uh, we are, uh, this is the best in blue challenge, but um, the blue's coming next. <laughs> I'm starting with that chocolate just because my kind of idea or theme for this piece is April showers bring May flowers. So, um, we're gonna have some flowers grow at the very bottom of the piece. So as we know, the ground isn't blue. So that's why I am using a brown color. And then we'll start in with our blue. I like this style of legs, these cabrio legs. They're just very graceful and elegant without being too, um, too curvy or too many twists and turns. I like all kinds of furniture, but I pr I'm particularly fond of this style of leg. I'm also blending the colors here. So I used um, the brown and then I went to the dark blue, but I'm using a big fluffy brush in between and I'm just uh, putting those colors 
together just to get rid of any harsh line. This is my first coat, so I'm not being too particular about blending it perfectly. Um, so then I come down with another lighter shade of blue. So I use a separate brush for all of the different colors that I'm using, and then one brush to blend everything together. So I've just been um, putting the brushes in a plastic bag when I'm done using them so I don't have to wash them out between coats. Uh, but the blending brush I'm just putting down in um, a bucket with water in it just to soak it. Um, then I just keep wiping it off or I, or I use the mister too um, to mist the brush a little bit just to get it so that it's... Um, able to blend those colors together. And again, this is just my first coat. Time for the second coat. And we get those brushes out of the bags and get started again. Same process. And now we have a roadmap. I open all the colors and get all the brushes out because when you're doing blending, you want your paint to be wet. You don't want it to start drying off, which is why you use the mister bottle to uh, reactivate any paint that starts to dry. So I start again with the chocolate over where I went before. I think this color I'm using here is in the navy. Again, these are all Dixie Belle colors. And if you're interested in purchasing any of the paints that I use, you can go to my description box and there's an affiliate link. That means that you order directly from Dixie Belle, but I get a little kickback and it doesn't cost you any more. So here we are blending again, same process as before. Um, also in the description box, you'll find um, my Amazon wish list, and that's an awesome way for you to support a small business, as is the new super thanks that you'll see uh, at the bottom of the screen. Your likes and shares are also another way that you show me that you appreciate what I do, and I certainly appreciate what you do by subscribing, sharing, liking, commenting, and just watching. The next color I use is called Bunker Hill Blue. Same process. And if you get a little uh, area where you feel like you need more of the previous color, then you just add it in and just blend it just as if uh, you were doing it the first time. So the process stays the same throughout. Um, really, you just want to make sure that you wipe that brush off frequently. And you'll notice, play around with the paint. Um, you'll notice when you paint, uh, or when you use the mister, that it starts to move that paint around even before you touch it with the brush. So uh, don't be afraid of this technique. It's really pretty easy. Um, I know I was afraid of it too. So yeah, people said it's easy and I thought, no, it's not. But really, truly, once you start doing it all the time, you'll find out that it really is. So there's an area where I added some more of the, um, in the Navy to bring back some of that color. And I begin the same process on the uh, 
actual furniture piece. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that I want to keep my colors at the same level as where they are on the bench. This is slightly bigger proportionately, but I want to basically keep those areas of the chocolate, the um, in the Navy, the Bunker Hill about the same so that it looks good when they're standing side by side. And now I introduce a new color, which is blueberry. I paint the drawer in blueberry as well because it fits in that section where I've already painted with the blueberry. Now I decide to add some of that interest that I was um, thinking about with the May flowers. And I'm using the vintage floral transfer part of the bells and whistles line of Dixie Bell and I'm just going to rub on these little flowers now let me tell you that this transfer is giving me a hard time um, apparently this batch of transfers was from a different manufacturer and they did require a little extra effort for application so not only did we have that going on but also working with the curve of that leg it really took a long time so I'm definitely going to speed this process up so you don't have to watch this painstaking process um, I'm using a transfer tool from redesign with Prima um, but it's it just takes me a long time to apply this transfer and I do the same on the other front leg Check out this brush that I got at Walmart. I've been having some trouble with my hand, so it's really perfect because it lets me hold the brush like a gun. And it didn't take really any learning curve to get used to using it. So I'm pretty happy with it. Now I switch my paint over to a color called Dusty Blue. Another thing I like about that brush is that the bristles are really soft and they clean out very easily, mm -hmm. just like um, I have found like zebra brushes are. And if you've ever used those, they just clean out beautifully. So um, I recommend you look at that one and give it a try. But again, I'm using dusty blue on the top of the piece. I continue to use dusty blue for the mirror parts. I went to the hardware store and got fixed up with another bolt, uh, very similar to the first one. That one was a little longer, so it was almost too long. So then I actually found one in my stash that worked for it. But I wanted to attach the back to the front at this point in time um, so that I could continue the next part of my efforts of the paint effect. When I reattach it, I just put that uh, little locking nut in the the holder, the, the frame holder, and then put the screw in from the bottom, and then screw that in, and then once that's in, I tighten that locking bolt on the back of the frame. And then I reinsert the mirror. I resume painting with my dusty blue.
Now it's time to pay attention to that hardware. I'm using Dixie Bell's Prime Start on this uh, handle because it's metal and I'm going to use some patina paint on it, which is a paint that actually creates oxidization or a rust effect. So whenever you're using anything with metal, you want to prime it with this first so that the oxidization doesn't actually uh, rust the actual metal, just the paint. Here I'm applying some of the copper patina to the top of this mirror. I'm applying it in a fashion that just makes it look like it's raining on top of the piece. I keep that in mind the entire time I'm painting, trying to keep the direction of my stroke in a downward uh, motion. Um, also covering the tops of the, the holder for the mirror. And those little pins, I coated them with the dusty blue, so I'm not going to worry about using Prime Start on them, even though they're metal, because they have been primed with a coat of paint. I return to the handle. After I put a first coat of the copper patina on, just like I did on the mirror, I put a second coat. And here is where the magic happens with this patina paint. Um, it is, it has metal particles in it. So you always want to remember to shake and stir the paint, but, um, there's an activator spray and I chose the blue because of course it is the best in blue challenge. So I use that to activate the copper patina so that we get a nice blue patina on that handle. So you just want to make sure you shake it and then you saturate the, uh, the piece. The effect starts to happen almost immediately, but then, um, the best thing is when you walk away, you come back and you see a lot of the magic has started to happen. I do the same thing on the mirror, apply the second coat, and just in the same fashion, and then I apply the activator spray. I go to the, the table legs or the vanity legs in the front and apply a uh, transfer here. These ones are slightly larger, but from the same collection. Next, I apply some clear wax. You can see how the patina dried. It is definitely blue and very drippy. My friend Susan is in the shop with me, so you see her reflection in the mirror. I'm using Dixie Belle's Best Dang brush, nice big brush, to apply wax all over the entire piece. I use a shop rag to wipe back the wax. Next, I get my chameleon waxes in cactus, lilac, and apricot. I use my fingers to apply some of the uh, chameleon wax to the top of the mirror. It gives it an iridescent finish, and I was going for that wet rain look. Remember what this piece looked like before? Check out what it looks like now. Thank you so much for watching today. If you like this video, how about giving it a thumbs up and also share it with your friends. If you haven't subscribed, you'll want to do that so you don't miss anything. 
Visit us at LaVintageDecor.company and on Instagram, we're LaVintageDecor and on Facebook, we're LaVintageDecor Altoona. Stay well.